Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a makeup inventory. So I'm gonna be taking inventory of my entire collection. This video is gonna be all about the numbers. I'm gonna post pictures up while I'm talking as well to show you the actual products, but it's mainly gonna be focused on the numbers. I'm doing this because this year I'm doing two different projects that I think are going to change the way that my collection looks and I want to have this inventory here at the beginning of the year as a reference point for me to look back to at the end of the year to see how my collection has changed throughout 2023. I'm doing a project pan video which if you're interested in that you can check out the introduction to that project. And I'm also doing a no buy, which specifically I'm doing it on makeup, but other categories as well. If you're interested in that project, feel free to check out that introduction video as well. My name is Jay on this channel. I tend to create a lot of planner content. And also I've been shifting my channel a little bit to include more makeup content, more conscious consumerism content. And because I'm doing both of those projects this year, the no, the no buy and the project pan, I'm going to be doing updates on them throughout the year and kind of talking about how the project's going, how I'm feeling, stuff like that. So if any of that is interesting to you, I'd love you to take a second to like and subscribe. It'd be greatly appreciated. And without further ado, let's just hop into it. Just a quick note before we get started, the photos that I'm gonna put up on the screen for you guys to look at, I'm also looking at them. They're just right below the camera. So if you see me glancing down, that's what I'm looking at. The first category that we're gonna talk about is primers. I included both my face and eye primers in the same category. I just don't have a ton of excess and I don't feel the need to like split them up for any reason. So I currently have six, two of them are eye primers. One of them is like a traditional actual eye primer. The other one is a glitter primer. Um, and then I have four face primers. Two of them are samples. Well, one of them is like an actual rare beauty sample. It's real small. And then the other one is 15 milliliters, I believe. So it's half the size of a normal primer. It's not a sample size, maybe like a deluxe travel size is what you'd categorize it as, but it's not a full size. And then two of the other primers that I have are full size and both of them have been used a lot and are well on their way to exiting my collection. So I'm feeling really good about this category. Even though I own four face primers, it's a little bit more than I'd like to own. Two of them are smaller than normal full sizes and the two full sizes that I do have have a lot of use on them. So I feel good about it. The next category that we're gonna be talking about is foundation. For foundations, I currently have eight and one of them is a sample. I have a sample of the Rose Ink luminous tinted whatever the Chanel dupe um so that just came into my collection right before the new year and then the rest of them are full sizes I feel okay about this I definitely own more than I want to own for years I used MAC face and body it was my go-to foundation the only thing I wanted to use since like high school okay and then sometime throughout the pandemic I realized that it wasn't really working for me anymore. I don't know if my skin changed. At some point it did go through a formula change as well. So I'm not really sure what exactly sparked it, but I wasn't as content anymore with that product. So I started to try to find some different things to try out. So this collection has grown, but I'm not upset about it. Everything that I have in this collection, I actually really enjoy. I just haven't gotten to try the rose ink sample yet, but everything else I know that I really enjoy and would like to make my way through them. One of them, the Chanel Le Beige Eau de Tente, that's like almost done. Like I could finish that in like two weeks if I used it every day, if that. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. The Charlotte Tilbury one is in my project pan. The Chanel Sublimage is like my all time favorite foundation. The Eau de Tente, or no, what is it called? The Complexion Touch, the newer Chanel foundation. Those, they're really nice, but the bottles are only 20 ml, which a normal foundation is 30 ml. So it would take me a shorter amount of time to finish that one than an average foundation. Anyway, all of this to say, I really enjoy everything that I own and I am trying to work my way through them. So I currently have eight and one of them is a sample. For powders, I currently have nine. There's eight in the pictures because I couldn't find the other one. Since taking the pictures, I found the other one. It's the full size Laura Mercier translucent setting powder that's missing from this picture, but the small one's there. So I didn't really feel the need to retake the picture because it's, it's represented in one way or another. I do have nine. One of them is a travel sample size, the Laura Mercier one. Um, this includes both this category includes both 
loose powders and pressed powders. I definitely own more here than I'd like to. Um, two of them are in my project pan and one of them I've almost hit pan on. Another one I have hit pan on already. Um, yeah, I'm, I went through a similar thing with powders trying to find like my favorites and I definitely bought too many but I do like all of the ones that are here. The only ones that I'm not too sure about right now are the Hourglass ones and the MAC one, but the rest of them, or the Hourglass pressed one and the MAC one, the loose one from Hourglass, I love. The rest of them I do quite enjoy. I would like to work my way through them. Um, so yeah, even though it's more than I want to own, I don't feel terrible about it. Everything that I own, I really enjoy and it's okay. This next section, <laughs> This next section is concealers. I have so many. I have 10 of them, which that sounds wild to me. Two of them are backups, haven't been opened. They're the Kosas Revealer Concealer. They were a little bit of a panic buy towards the end of the year. And we'll talk about that maybe in like my first check-in for my no buy about like what I, my panic buys before I started my um, project. But Anyway, <clears throat> two of them are backups, so I don't care about them. They're not open. They're not actively, like, degrading. Um, the rest of them, there's just a lot. The NARS one, the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, I exclusively use on blemishes, and the rest of them I use, like, a normal concealer. So I own too many. The Kosas one that's open is on its way out. It's in my Project Pan. After that one, I plan on panning a couple of other ones. But at this point, though, at least it can say is that I think I've found my favorite concealers out of the group. So if that's any positive thing to come out of this, I've found my favorites. Um, but yeah, definitely more than I want to own. And I'm going to work this year to try and reduce that category. Next, we've got bronzers, which I love bronzers. Bronzers and blush Honestly, I love all makeup, but bronzer and blush have always been like my thing. I love complexion. So I currently have 13 bronzers. Seven of them are powders, three, no, seven of them are powders, five of them are creams, and one, the Patrick Ta one has a cream and a powder in it. A couple of these are on the chopping block. Um, so I'm still trying to gather my thoughts and just decide whether or not I want to keep them or declutter them. And then the rest of them, I just love. <laughs> just love them so much. So I'm not too worried about this collection. I use my bronzers. I'll probably not be able to finish them all. And realistically, I know that, but I get really good use out of all of them. I just really love this category and it is the way that it is. I have 13. <laughs> the next category is blush, which I couldn't believe it when I counted them out. I have 25 blushes. And the reason why this inventory was a little bit of a shock to me, especially when it came to bronzer and blush, is because when I think of bronzer and blush, I distinctly think of cream blush and cream bronzer versus powder blush and powder bronzer as two distinct categories. Because even if I have like the exact same color in a cream blush and the exact same color in a powder blush, I don't care that they're the same color because in my mind, when I reach for a blush every morning, my first decision is, am I going to use a powder or am I going to use a cream? Like, and then if I decide to use a powder, those are all the colors that I have. And I decide to use a cream. Those are all the colors that I have. So it doesn't really matter to me whether the colors are identical if they're the different formula because I use them for different purposes on different days. So I was a little shocked when I realized that cumulatively I have 25 blushes. Um, but individually, I have 13 cream blushes and 11 powder blushes, and then one of the Patrick Todd duos that has the cream and powder in it. And I mean, I feel like that's a lot. And I was trying to think if I wanted to declutter any of them. And the answer right now is no. There's a couple of them on the chopping block, but I just need to play around with them a little bit more to actually decide how I feel about them. And then I'll be able to decide whether or not I want to keep them or declutter them. But honestly, this is a part of my collection that I absolutely love. You can see repeats of specific formulas because I've fallen in love with the formula. And like, for me, that's a good sign. I love when 
I find a specific formula of something and I love it so much and I'll buy it in a couple of different colors that just means that it is like a true and genuine love for me as opposed to having like 25 blushes that are all different like that seems more overwhelming in some way to me so yeah I don't know looking at it cumulatively and looking at this big number it feels like a lot but also I need to recognize that like in my day-to-day I'm not sitting here like I have 25 blushes. I'm sitting here like, oh, I have this collection of cream blushes and this collection of powder blushes and I decide which I want to interact with. And yeah, that's why like when I put them on together, I was like, whoa. But then I was also like, oh, like that kind of makes sense because I do have a lot of choices in both of those categories. But yeah, 25 blushes. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Next highlight, I have nine of them in this highlight category. I've also included like liquid illuminizers. So all in all, I have nine. Two of them are unopened. I bought this say holiday kit that had two of the minis in there. It's unopened. I won't touch it until I finish the current one from say that I'm working on, um, which is also in my project pan. But I feel okay about this category. Again, I've included liquid illuminizers and actual highlighters within the same category, but the I use them two completely different ways. The liquid illuminizers, I will tend to mix into my foundations or use them under my foundations, whereas the actual highlights, I'm using them just to highlight like specific areas. So even though I have nine, I have more so like, let's see, one, three, four, six six mix-in products two of those being backups so four active mix-in products and then three actual highlighters and that's fine for me so yeah nine in the highlight category for brows <laughs> for brows I have 13 yeah 13 products for eyebrows nine of them are backups so they haven't been touched they're not open they don't live with my active collection they live in the backup box i only have four open which is pretty much all i ever have open at any given time i just have a number of backups um so yeah i have four backup eyebrow pencils i have three of my holy grails from benefit one from rowan i've never tried it before i will try it when i finish the current brow pencil i'm using I have um, a couple tinted brow gel backups, a couple clear brow gel backups, and then a backup of my uh, brow pen. I mean, 13 sounds like a lot, but I only ever have four open at a time, and that's fine for me. It, this is just showing me that I don't need to buy any more backups, but I'm not going to declutter any of these things. I enjoy these. There's only one that I might declutter. Um, and then the other one, I'm gonna have to test the formula out when it comes time to open it and I might declutter it. But anyway, I'm okay with this category because I'm not stressed about things going bad because they're not open yet. And I haven't owned them for like five years unopened, so they're not going bad sitting in my backups box either. Um, but yeah, 13, it's <laughs> a lot. But four in my open uh, collection. I wasn't sure when I was doing the counting if I was going to include the things in my backup box or not and I decided to include them because I, I own them. Whether or not I've actively opened them and I'm using them or not, I still own them and I'm glad that I did it because when I pulled all of my brow products out I really realized hey it doesn't matter how much something goes on sale I don't need any more brow product backups. So I think it was a good exercise. Anyway, 13 for brows. For mascaras, I have 10 currently open. No, no, I own 10. <laughs> I have four currently open, and then six of them are backups, which I feel fine with that number. I love playing out with mascaras. I actually got two of them for Christmas, so that was really nice. And then, yeah, I'll open them as I need them. I tend to always have three mascaras open at a time. I normally have a tubing mascara, a volumizing mascara and then typically I have like some kind of dinky travel size or sample size that I'm just trying out. Somehow I always end up with three mascaras open. Right now I have four um, but normally three. I feel good about this number of mascaras. I'll probably be able to finish them all by the end of the year or at least have them opened and using all of them by the end of the year. So 
that one's fine for me. Okay, so the next category are like single eyeshadows. So eyeshadows that are like individual pans or compacts. I don't own any like single eyeshadows, like magnetic ones that you'd put in like magnetic pans, but I'm talking about like single pots of eyeshadow that have like a lid or a liquid eyeshadow with an applicator, like eyeshadows that are their own entity. In that category, I have 12. This is another category that's like further subdivided in my mind. So there's the kind of single eyeshadow that I can do a one and done look with. And then there's also the kind of single eyeshadow that I use as a topper on top of other eye looks. So yeah, and then there's also a mix here of powder, cream, and liquid eyeshadow. So I feel pretty okay about this category. Um, yeah, I feel fine about it. I have, let's see, two liquid eyeshadows, three cream eyeshadows, and two of them are the Tom Ford cream and powder ones. So they have creams on the bottoms, powders on the tops, but I think of them as cream eyeshadows. I never reach for just the powder. So I have three cream shadows, two liquid eyeshadows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven powder single eyeshadows, and two of those are toppers. So it was a lot of numbers thrown at you, but I feel okay with this category. The next category that I have is eyeliners, and I'm so happy about this category. I only own three, and they are all the same. They are all the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal eyeliners. I bought Coco and Bronze, which were the first two that I ever owned in January of 2022 because I got a gift card for Christmas, and I loved them so much that steadily all throughout 2022, I would like pick up another one of my older eyeliners, use it, and be like, no, that did not glide and just gone, <laughs> either decluttered it or throw it out. And by the end of the year, I just had the two Victoria Beckham ones left and I was so happy about them. And then they released their Satin Kajal Jewel eyeliners and I asked for one of those for Christmas. So I now have three and I'm really satisfied with that collection. So next, let's talk quads. I discovered in 2022 that I really like an eyeshadow quad. Dare I say, it may be my like favorite kind of eyeshadow format. I love quads. When I can find a good quad that has everything that I need in a shadow palette, it just, it's the easiest thing for me. So I currently have nine eyeshadow quads, five of them Tom Ford, two of them Chanel, and two are the Rowan Cream, Rowan Cream quads. And so loud <laughs> two of them are the Rowan cream quads and I feel really happy about this size of collection I love the Tom Ford ones I bought them all last year I bought them all at the cosmetic company outlet so they were wildly cheaper <laughs> than the regular price that they're sold for but I love them all they're great I love the Chanel ones last year was like my first foray into Chanel eyeshadows and I really enjoy them and then the Rowan ones I had had the 75 degree one for years and then I bought the 1111 this past year. So I feel really good about all my quads. I love my quads. But this question, this category like grew exponentially just because over this past year, I realized how much I love a quad. Um, so yeah, those are the quads. Next, let's talk about palettes. So I currently own seven eyeshadow palettes. Two of them are actively on the chopping block. Um, I need to play with them a little bit more, but the fact that I don't even really wanna play with them, I feel like gives me my answer, but I'll decide about those eventually. Seven, I don't feel terribly about that number. I feel like that's a really reined in number compared to previous years. I don't actually have like strict numbers from previous years because I never really did an inventory, but I do know that this collection has shrunk in massive ways. But I think it also like coincides with the fact that I've discovered that I like quads. So I removed a number of my bigger palettes, but I bought more quads. So anyway, I have seven here. I feel okay about this number. I have a feeling that two might be leaving soon. So yeah, that's where I'm at with eyeshadow palettes right now. Next, we've got lip liners, which I have five of them. Similarly to what happened with my eyeliners happened with my lip liners over the past year. I had something like 20 lip liners at one point. I feel like I had a lot. 
And then this past year, I really just started using two, fell in love with them. They're all I really want to use. I could see myself decluttering this collection down to three. Honestly, two of them are on the chopping block. I just feel really good about my lip liners. I know exactly what I like in a lip liner and the kinds of colors that I like. And yeah, so those are my lip liners. I have five. Next, I have lipsticks. I will say I kind of struggled with this section because I have products like the Hourglass Phantom Volumizing, Phantom Volumizing Glossy Balm and the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glow Lip Plumping Serum. And both those products are like, kind of like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy products where it's essentially like a lip gloss in a stick. So you can't twist them back down. Once you twist them up, they're up. They're really glossy. They're, they're like lip gloss sticks. I put them in the lipstick category, but I don't know. Like, how do you guys categorize those kinds of products? Because like on the lips, they look like you've applied a lip gloss, but packaging wise, they're packaged like a lipstick. Anyway, I put them in the lipstick category for the purposes of this. I'm interested though to know how you guys categorize them or would categorize them if you don't own any. Anyway, 16, I feel like this is a really good number. I worked real hard last year to find my favorite lipstick formulas and whittle and declutter um, my current collection. A lot of the stuff that I had was just old. I feel like after the pandemic, a lot of us are like hitting that point where, okay, it's time to go through our lip products, the products that we didn't get to use for like a year and a half because we were wearing masks. And I finally did that. I went through all of them. I, you know what, maybe not finally. I feel like I went through them throughout the entirety of last year as I would pick one up to use one or as I realized, hey, I haven't touched that in three years. I kind of started to declutter or throw away. And I'm at a really good point with my lipstick collection. There's a lot of repeating formulas here because I found my favorite formulas for lip products. I know exactly what I like. I finally got rid of like the one red that I felt that I should keep in case I ever decide to wear a red lipstick. I'm never going to wear a red lipstick. <laughs> I reckoned with that within myself and got rid of my one red lipstick. And it made me so happy when I finally did it. I was like, I'm just acknowledging my true self. Um, so I feel really good with this collection. It doesn't feel overgrown. Everything that I have is out. I can see it all. I can interact with it all. Nothing is getting left behind or shoved into the back of a drawer. And I feel like this is my sweet spot. Um, for the next category, I have lip stains. I have three of them, two from Victoria Beckham, one from Benefit. One of them is in my project pan. The other two I love and use all the time. That's one thing that came out of the pandemic for me. I really discovered I do like a lip stain. It's low fuss, easy going. The two that I have fade really gracefully. I do like that formula a lot. The next category, oh, this is the last category is lip gloss. So similarly, kind of with lipstick, I struggled to know where to put some of these formulas. Like under lip gloss, I've included tinted lip balms, I've included lip oils, I've included liquid lip balms, pretty much anything that goes on your lips that has a color or that just doesn't feel like a traditional lip balm. Anything that goes on your lips that's like super glossy went in this category and I feel pretty good about it. Um, I feel fine. I have a mix of lip oils, again, all these different kinds of formulas and I feel, I feel good about it. At one point, this collection was massive. I have an affinity for specifically Dior lip products. I worked at a place that sold Dior. I got in a lot of lip products from Dior like via that job and that, collection was so overgrown. I no longer work there so I don't have this influx of constant Dior lip products and honestly I felt better since then so <laughs> I still have a lot of Dior um, but the ones that I do have I love and I do use and I feel good about them. It doesn't feel like this overburdened, overrun part of my collection so 
yeah, those are all of my lip glosses. So again, we're at 19. Oh, and one of them, the Clarins lip, uh, lip oil all the way on the right, unopened, the full size one. So that's in my backups box. I might end up at some point just gifting it to someone, but um, so 19, but only 18 of them are open. So, okay, all in all, I own 224 makeup items. <sighs> it feels like that sounds like a really big number, but when I look category by category, I'm really happy with all the things that I own. There's only a couple sections here today where I was like, there's a couple of things on the chopping block. Everything else like I'm really satisfied with, happy with, happy with, want to work on. So even though like 224 sounds like a big number, I'm okay about it. I'm also like never looking at my collection in this way. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like 224, what does that mean? Like it all fits in my storage. It all, like nothing is really overrun. So what does it matter whether or not I had 200 or 250? In terms of how I feel on the day to day, I'm not impacted by that specific number. It's just something nice to know. And we'll look at the end of the year. I'm gonna do a different, at the end of the year, I'm gonna do another, or at the beginning of 2024, I guess, I'm gonna do another makeup inventory. And I guess we'll be able to compare those numbers. And that's where that figure is gonna be helpful. But on like the day-to-day -day of my life, it doesn't really matter whether or not I have 150 or 250 if how I feel. Like I, that's an arbitrary number for me. I feel really good about my collection right now. And I feel like that's all that needs, that's all that I need, right? So we'll see though. This project was interesting. <laughs> um, Really interesting. It's nice though because everything that I pulled out like I didn't feel like I had forgotten about any of those things which that's why when I say like what does that number mean because it's not like I was pulling things out of my drawer and was like oh yeah like I had this or oh yeah oh I forgot about that I have to use that more pretty much everything that I was pulling out of my drawers I remembered I had an opinion about I know whether or not I liked it I like it's all able Hannah Louise Poston often talks about like her mind palace. All of it lives in my mind palace. Like I can see it all, interact with it all. I have clear acrylic drawers. It sits on top of my desk. I do my work here and I also get ready here in the mornings and I can, I can see it all. So it's all able to stay in my mind palace. And I guess at the end of the day, that's what matters to me. Is it all able to actively live in my mind palace, right? And I guess there's not a specific number where that makes it impossible. It's not like I can sit here and be like, well, once I hit 350, that's the capacity of my mind palace. I, I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see, right? Like I'm going to work on finishing products, but at the end of the year, if I have more than what I've started with, I guess we'll see if it all fits in my mind palace. I don't really have a specific number that's like the limit of my mind palace. All I can tell you is that right now it's all in there and I enjoy all my makeup and these are the numbers. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to like follow follow along and see how my collection changes, feel free to subscribe. Also going forward over the next couple of months, I think I mentioned this in the video in the beginning, but I'm also going to like deep dive into each of these categories with swatches and like up close color shots and my like be able to go on. I mean, I don't know if you want to listen to me go on, but I'm going to go on about how I feel about each of the specific products more so than I was able to do in this video. And if that is something that you're interested in, it's going to be overhead. If that's something that you're interested in, I'd love for you to subscribe so you can know when those videos come out. But anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely day. I've been talking for so long. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.